guys, it's Shala from Crafting Through the Chaos of Life. Thanks so much for joining me for another video. I am back to do a little tutorial. I have pulled out my ephemera idea book and I want to add to it. So the last thing that we actually did was we did this flip down notepad. So it's much like a matchbook style fold down. In, in terms of um, how you fold it. I showed you this last time. And then here's our little notebook. So you can actually tuck this in as a, you know, a standalone piece or I've glued it onto this page so that it is a pocket on the back. So that was the last thing we did. But I want to create some kind of ready-made pages or you know, ready-made things for full blank pages. You know when we when we create a journal and you know we've got some beautiful imagery on one page and then the next page say is just like a big blank page or you can actually just you know pull out your pages. I just have a coffee dyed page here. My my standard kind of journals usually are um, able to accommodate an eight and a half inch eight, 11 by eight and a half inches. Yeah, it folded in half, right? So that makes it eight and a half inches by uh, five and a half inches. So I, what you can do is you can pre-decorate a whole bunch of these pages with ephemera and that they're ready to go into your, so into the signatures of your journals. Um, so, uh, sorry, I have these fruit flies, so I might like, like grab at things look like I'm twitching here, but yeah, they're just so annoying. I can't, figure out how to get rid of them. Anyways, so yeah, I want a whole bunch of ideas that I can use to help cover those big blank pages because sometimes you don't want like a big white blank page. So that's what we're going to do today. And I had watched um, Gail Gastinelli, who I think got the idea from Frida Hepner, I think is her name. Anyways, so I originally saw this idea from Gail. And I thought I would give it a go and I pulled out just some really kind of fun springy papers because that's, you know, Christmas is over and my head is already going to spring. So I just thought it would be kind of cool to uh, pre-create some of these full page pockets that I can just have on hand and I thought I'd try playing around with these papers. So what Gail called it was a full page multi-pocket pocket. All right, so what we need to do first is create our bases. And I think for my base, oh, silly flies. Um, I have four different pieces here. You can also use double-sided. This is just a recollections paper pad that I have. Again, I'm really, really trying to use up my stash, not buying anything new. And so this is the papers that I'm gonna use. Go ahead, use whatever you have. You can use scraps, as long as it's um, probably more on the thicker cardstock type of weight for the paper, not copy paper. Okay, so the base that we need to create is going to be eight inches by five inches, and that'll cover a blank page just perfectly. So I think I am going to, I think I'm gonna be kind of boring and use this solid piece as my base. So I'm gonna put the other ones to the side. And I always save these little strips here. And I have a little strip box that I'll show you. Let's see if I can get it to tear off nicely. There we go. And I'll show you what I do with them. I have a container here that I store my long strips in and then I have a smaller one that has my smaller strips. And what I end up doing with these is uh, you definitely can use them for collage, but I have recently been making, one second and I'll show you, pretty excited about this. I have been using those pieces to make my own paper beads. Aren't these cool? So yeah, a lot of fun in, in making these. But just an idea, if you don't know what to do with those strips and you want to save them, you can definitely make your own. Like this is a strip of scrapbook paper. Isn't that one beautiful? See that? It looks like a glass bead. Isn't that gorgeous? And all I did was um, I used a knitting needle and 
wrapped it around the knitting needle. Now there's different shapes that you can cut and create. You can look at that on the internet yourself. Um, like ones that kind of create this type of shape of a bead. It's more like uh, thicker kind of in the center of it here. Or this one is just, you know, kind of straight. Um, but yeah, then what you do is you just uh, run them along a Versamark pad and then I dip them into some chunky embossing powder and then I just emboss them up. I do that, I emboss them twice and they come out looking like glass beads but they're just paper. But a lot of fun to make. I like this one here that's got the, made out of the music paper. So yeah, these are great to embellish your journals with, like have little dangles with these paper beads and it doesn't add a lot of weight to your journal because they're just paper. They're not like glass or plastic beads. So, and just an idea to keep in mind. If you do want to see a tutorial on how I do these, let me know down below. I can definitely uh, do that for you guys. It's really simple, but there's lots of videos out there too that you guys can check out. So, okay, the first thing we need to do, like I said, is create our base, and our base is going to be eight inches by five inches. So I'm gonna grab my paper trimmer. Again, use scraps if you want. I'm just looking to kind of step away from some of the fall papers that I had been using, and thought I would go ahead and play with some spring-like colors. So eight inches. Um, how do I want to do this? I'm going to do it this way, I think. So eight inches this way. Like so. This can be used as one of those flip downs that we just made the last time I did that, did our ephemera idea book. Pop that off to the side. Eight by five. Just five inches there. Okay, and hopefully that looks, does that look straight, eight by five? Yeah, that looks pretty good. And I think I might actually, I can probably make two out of this, eight by five. And then another little piece, we can create tags or whatever with this piece. So I've got two bases for this one. And I do want to do another, I've got some other papers here. Again, this is from a Recollections paper pad from my stash. So this is great mass make kind of project. And I want to pick a base. I think I'm going to use this top one as the base for this other set of papers that I have going on here. So I might as well cut everything at the same time and then I can glue. So there's eight inches. Get it lined up there. Save that by five inches. Sorry, I'm not sure if you guys can see my cutting here, but I mean, you know how to cut. You just really need the measurements, right? Eight by five, and then eight by five again, and then a nice little piece for tags that we can use. So we are basically going to create four for our ephemera stash and we'll put one into our idea book. So there's our bases. I'm just going to set those off to the side for half a second here. The next thing we need to do is there's going to be three other pockets that are going to be on here. So our first pocket that we're going to create is four inches by three inches. And I think my next pocket that I want to use, I think I'm going to use this pattern. And that is going to be, I'm not going to worry about taking this strip off right now. I just want to cut, so four by th three. Um, so I should be able to get, I need two of those. Actually, I need four of them because I have... There's going to be two pockets on each base, so that means I need four of them. Okay, just depending on how many you're, you're building at a time here, right? So four pockets at four inches. So this is actually going to work well because this is a 12 by 12 piece. Actually, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and cut this off while I'm here. I could have just ripped it, but 
I like the cut edge better than the perforated one that kind of happens sometimes. Okay, so four inches. Like so. Set that to the side for a second. Actually put it over there. Okay, four and then three inches. And I need four of these because I have two bases. So four by three. So there's one. and then this should work out evenly three and four yeah okay so I have four of those pockets and I'm gonna set them with this base here the pa next paper that I want to use on this one is oh goodness is this one. I think I want to put that over top. So again we're going to do our four inches. Like this. Put that aside and then we're going to cut it at three inches and we want four pieces. One three and four okay so these are our first pockets on our base so this one I'm going to set with this the next pocket so pocket number two is going to be three and a half inches by two and a half inches. Now again, we're going to need four of those because we have two bases and there's two pockets on each base. So, I'm going to use, I think I'm gonna use this one. I cut off this kind of little branding strip here. And if you have double-sided pages, you can just flip them over and then that would coordinate well. So if you're like using Tim Holtz stuff, that would be fantastic. Now this is um, directional paper, so I need to think about that too. So I need to have it this way to cut three and a half inches. So there's three and a half inches. Okay, and then we need by two and a half inches. So there's two and a half, and I need four of these. Did I cut that wrong though? I think I did. I think I wanted my two and a half to be the longer, or to be the I gotta think about this. Because this is going to go on like this. And then that's going to go over top. So yeah, I three and a half. Yeah, I needed it to go the other way. Okay, that's okay. I'm just gonna put this aside. Not a big deal. Okay, we want directionally two and a half this way. Yes, two and a half this way. There we go. And then we want three and a half this way because we want the length on there. Okay, okay, we've got it. So three and a half. That's one. Two, three, this is going to make a cute little tiny tag, a little bunny on there, so we'll set that aside. So I need one more of these, which I think I'll just alter this. So I'm gonna go three and a half this way, 
like that. And then I can do two and a half this way to fix it. Come on. I mean, we can use that as a little collage strip. It could be like a little, little mini belly band too. Who knows? Okay, so we've got four of those. And that is for this one. Now we need to do the same thing with our next paper. And I thought, I thought, I thought, let's do this one. Okay, so we're gonna do, doesn't matter on this because it's not directional. So we'll do three and a half. Two and a half. Now there's one other cut that we have to make on the second pocket. And I'll show you that in just a minute. Let me just get these cut. Three and a half. Or sorry, that's two and a half. Two and a half. And one more. and a half another little tiny piece for a tag okay so the second pocket that we just cut which are these ones here we need to angle cut these ones okay so we'll make sure that we're kind of face up here which is all good so I'm going to kind of put the point of this here at the one and three quarter mark so right there no I'm gonna do it like this there we go so when you're looking at your little pocket you're gonna take your top left hand point and line it up at the one and three quarter mark like this and then you can just kind of angle it I'm going to angle it so that the point the bottom right hand point is right at where it's going to get trimmed off nicely. Does that make sense? Can you see that? So that we're cutting off like a little triangle piece like that. So again, I'm making sure that this point is at two, sorry, one and three quarter inches. So that's the top left point and then the bottom right point is right kind of where your cutter is, where it's going to cut. And just a titch more, okay? And then we're just going to simply trim. And then that gives us this kind of angle. I mean, you can have your angle more drastic if you want it. That's, you know, up to you how you want to do it. But I'm going to cut all these at the same time just to make it go a little bit faster. So the top left point is at the one and three quarter inch mark. And then the bottom right corner is centered to where you're going to cut. Ooh, there we go. That was tough. Did I get it through? Yeah. Okay, perfect. So we've got those ones done and now we need to do these ones. I think I'm just going to cut two at a time because I pushed my trimmer just a little bit on that. Come on. One and three quarters and line up the point to the cutting. There we go. Like so. How many of these do I have? Did I cut three at once? Oh, I did. Okay, that's fine because I need four of them. Scooch just a little bit. There we go. Okay, so this is our second pocket done, right? That's going to go onto there, and that one goes with this one. Our last pocket, which is our third pocket, is going to be one inch by one and five eighths. Okay, so this is where I need to pull out my math thing. So one and five eighths. 
so five eighths is here, so it's after the half inch mark. Okay, <laughs> I'm not great at at math. Okay, so we're gonna cut it by one inch. It's gonna be a tiny pocket. There's the one inch. This is kind of tricky. Or should I do it at one and five eighths inch first? That's probably easier. So one and five eighths. So I'm gonna go to the one and a half and five eighths is right there. Make sure I'm lined up on the top and bottom. And then we'll trim that. Okay, now I need to do one inch little cuts and I need four of them. There's one. Ooh, these are tiny. There's two. Three. And four. Okay. We still have this nice big piece to play with. So there's one set of pockets completely done. And then for this one, the last one, I decided I wanted to use this. And in order for it to sit properly with the pattern, I need one and five eighths. I'm cutting one and five eighths this way. So there. Like so. And then the one inch pieces. Kind of feel like it's easier to do it this way. I've got a one inch mark on this side, so I'm just going to do it this way. There you go. One. Two. I guess at the end of the day that doesn't really matter. Three. With the direction of it. Sorry, I should probably finish my sentence. And four. Again, a nice strip that we can do tags with. Okay. So now we can start putting together our pockets. Hip hip hooray. So this guy goes with this. Okay. Now there's a couple different things that we can do. I actually want to I want to round the corners, I think, of my first base here. just think that would look nice. You don't have to, you can keep them just the way they are. But I am going to round. Okay, and I think I'll do it as well for this. Just kind of doing both at once here. It's a little a little trickier, but there we go. And one more. Great. Okay. So for this one, I I could use a different color of ink to ink up the corners of these or the edges of these. But I think I'm just going to stick with tried, tested, and true vintage photo. And just lightly inking just to add a little bit of contrast and dimension to the edges. Just kind of helps frame out, out the piece. You don't have to do it if it's not your jam, if you don't like 
like making it vintagey looking. Again, you also don't have to use vintage photo. You can use walnut stain. You can use um, paint color. You don't even have to use distress inks. You can use whatever inks you have on hand. If you've got Gina K or whatever, use what you have. That's We're not going out this year and buying anything. We're using what we have. Okay, so there's that one. Sorry, I know the inking process is often not our favorite thing to watch, but it is a necessary process for me. It's what I like, so you do you and I'll do me and we'll be happy. Okay. There we go, almost done. Great, okay, I do like the look of that. It just, it really makes the edges stand out to me. It gives it kind of, yeah, dimension makes it look a little nicer for me anyways. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to put our first pocket on. And again, I think I might want to, because they're going to go like this, I think I might want to round the edges on these maybe. I don't know. Let's just see. Let's put it together and we'll see what we like. Then after that would come this guy. Like this. Cute little bunnies and chicks and flowers. Super happy. Okay, then there's that. And then we have these tiny little pockets here. Now, I know it looks really, really matchy, matchy, blendy, blendy right now, but again, once I ink up the edges, I think it's going to be nice. Um, I don't know if I want to round all the edges. Maybe let's do one with the edges rounded. And one without. I think I'm going to do a medium on this one though. The first one I did the large. This I'll do medium. Okay. Oops. There we go. And then, can we round these ones? Let's do the smaller one on this one. Can I get that in there? Ugh, I'm not going to be able to round that corner. Um, can I round that one? I can round that one a bit. Can I round that one? No, it just does not fit in there. But you know what, that's okay. We will just round the ones we can. Like that. Like that. There we go. And then these ones, I want rounded as well. Using the smallest one. I really, really love this corner rounder after I figured out it was user error and not using it properly. I was pushing down here when I was trying to punch. Don't do that. Push directly on here. And then it, it works way better. Okay. Oh, there's some running around going on upstairs. I wonder what's, what they're doing. Sorry if you hear that noise. Okay, so then now would be the time to ink if you're an inker. I'll try and be quick about it. You can always fast forward the inking process if you don't want to watch it. That is just fine. I won't know. Okay, so there's that. See just how that, like the difference there between inking it and not inking it? This one down here is not inked, this one is. It just makes it pop off the page just a bit more in my mind. I really like the, the shiny foil-like um, lines on here. Okay, so we've got that. And we'll ink this one up. Ink up our little chickies. 
I'm so excited for spring. I know we just got through Christmas and the new year, but I am, I'm not a huge winter lover. I like spring, summer, and fall. Winter, if I don't have to go out in minus 40 degree weather, I'm not too bad, but actually this winter hasn't been bad at all. We have definitely had some cold snaps like right at Christmas time there, but for the most part it hasn't been too bad at all. Helps, I guess, that we get these Chinooks. We've got a Chinook right now. It's about, yesterday was about plus two, and it's supposed to get, I think, to plus four or six in the next coming days, something like that, anyways. There we go, we've got those done, and then these ones we're just going to leave with the sharp corners, aren't we? Yeah, well, we could. Okay. Ink, ink, ink. And the nice thing is, is you definitely can use up your scrap papers with this. You just need a big enough base. And you know, mix and match your papers. That's, you know, they don't all have to be matchy-matchy like this is. You can definitely make it more contrasting and eclectic or however you like it. I think I kind of like the round corners better, but that's just me. Okay. There we go. So if you guys, uh, did you guys make any New Year's resolutions and are you sticking to them? I'm so proud of myself. I still have not purchased anything. You know, granted, we're not too far into the new year yet, but I, you know, I've been places where I've seen things and I'm like, oh, that would really make it. Mm, nope, not gonna do it. Not doing it. I got lots to get out of my craft room before I bring anything else in. And it's feeling so good, you guys. It's really um, challenging me to to use what I have and look at things that I have in a different way and actually do the projects that I promised myself I would do. Okay, we're ready to glue. I'm using art glitter glue because I like this glue. Now you could also, when you glue these on, I mean, you might not have room for a punch, but if you wanted your pocket to go on the side here, you could do that. You could do a little thumb notch here if you wanted your pocket to go this way as opposed to this way. So yeah, that just, it's up to you on how you want to glue your pockets on. Um, I think, well, why don't we do that? On this one, we'll do thumb notches on this side and on this one, we'll just do the, the top. Does that sound good? Okay, let me grab my, oh, it's right here. Handy dandy. I want to do these both at the same time so that the thumb notches are in the same spot for them. Okay. And we'll try to get it somewhat even on each side. Maybe like that. Okay. That looks good. Um, ink, ink, ink. Let's give it a little something there. And a little something there. Ooh, that got a little dark, but that's okay. Super duper. All right, let's glue these bad boys on. So I'm going to hold here just because that helps me realize not where I need not to put glue. Does that sound right? Was that proper English? Where I should not put glue? Okay. And then we kind of want these to be somewhat centered amongst the whole situation here. Can't tell if I'm straight, but that should be good. Again, one of the great things about junk journaling is it doesn't have to be perfect. Those are my kind of craft and art projects is those that don't have to be perfect. I do not have the 
the best patience in the world. I will admit that. Okay. That should be good. I like that. Like it, like it, like it a lot. There's my other little guy. So you... Well now, so now we're just going to glue in like an L shape on this guy. So glue, oops, glue here and up. Like that. Is that straight somewhat? Okay. And then the same thing on this one, this way, and this way. I really like these pockets. They're super cute. And again, your tops and bottoms don't have to match like this. You can do um, all sorts of different papers. But again, I would make sure it's a little bit on the thicker side. So this one, I'm actually going to do the three sides here. And it'll be just a teeny, teeny little tag or something that can fit in there. Maybe a ticket. Yeah, these are going to be great to cover those blank pages. Give them a little bit more character and interest you're flipping through a journal and these don't take long to make at all once you know the measurements right they are good to go okay super so there is one done and then again if you want you could have a, a notch here or a notch up here but then this is going to go on our page like this so yeah if you're you're i would probably put my notch maybe on this side to go in that way or maybe maybe you'd want it on this side maybe that would make sense and then everything tucks this way yeah maybe i'll i'll put it on this side and then i can write my instructions on here or i could yeah i could do that and then i could I could actually just take instructions, write them on the page, and tuck them in there. Sorry, I'm kind of off camera. So that's cute. Okay, so we've got one done. Let's finish this one, and then we'll get on to the next batch. And so this one we are going to... Uh, this one we said we we're going to do top tucks, right? So I'll glue here. And again, I like that you can switch up, um, you know, how you have the pockets, like how I have this one being a top, kind of a top tuck one. It's kind of the same thing, but different, right? You're, you're varying an original idea, and it just gives variety to what you're creating. Okay, this one. Yep, yeah, I'm liking this. You can definitely see making a stash of these. And having them ready to go. Would be super helpful. Okay, and then you are the L-shaped one. There we go. All right. that down. Might as well stick this one down while I'm at it. Now this one we could do, no we'll just do it top ways. It's not quite thick enough to do anything else I don't think. And again I think by adding the inking all around each piece it just helps it stand out from the next piece, right? I think that's kind of Kind of what I like about it. Again, you can embellish these if you just have like plain papers, like if all of them are just different colors like this, then you can just definitely 
decorate it with lace and buttons and stickers, collage on it. That works too. You don't have to have patterned papers. You can use your collage master boards as well. That's a good way to use up a master board. It's creating these fun little full, what did she call it? The full page multi pocket pocket. That makes sense, right? This has got multi pocket and it's a pocket in and of itself. Excellent. So we've got two done. I think those are super cute. A little different look on each one, but still kind of the same idea. All right, let's do the next one. And then we've got four made in an hour or 40. We're at 40 minutes now, so you know it doesn't take long to make these. I am going to. I'm going to round. I really like the rounding, so that's what I'm going to do. And we'll do two at a time, maybe. Um, for this one, it was the medium one I did. There we go. And there. You could even use your decorative punches, too, if you have. Okay, I gotta give my hands just a little of a break before I start punching again. I'm kind of sore and I need another drink. I have been so thirsty lately and my lips have been so dry. Ugh. Okay. Do our inking. Another great idea for our idea book. You could even do mini ones like this that, you know, wouldn't necessarily take up a full page if you didn't want to. You definitely can alter the size of this for whatever journal you're working on. Just gets the idea flowing for you. Okay. There we go. Yeah, I just like the look of the edges inked so much better. Now, I'm not sure how well this one's going to look together, but. Everything doesn't have to be super matchy-matchy. Sometimes it's fun when it's not. There we go. Again, if you don't like the inking, go ahead and just kind of hit that little button that skips you forward, I guess, 10 seconds or whatever it is. Hit that a couple times. Hopefully you'll come to the end of this inking portion of it. One more. There we go. Okay. I still have yet, my goal was to make myself a journal for 2023 and I still have not made my journal yet. Maybe that's going to be the next thing I do here. I'm not sure if I'll show that process um, on camera. I might just make it and show you how I kind of play around in it from time to time. I'm just not sure. I might do an altered book. I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to do, to tell you the truth. But I know that I need my own journal. Okay. those and I mean I don't really know how much it's gonna show if I ink on these edges but we'll just do it because it kind of takes the white off the off the edges and it's more of a peace of mind for me I guess okay and you guys 
So yeah, not not a hard project at all, but really cool to add to a page. Oh, woo, slippery little sucker, come back here. All right. And then we'll do our itty bitty pockets and then we can glue down. little pieces. I think I can do all four at once. I'm feeling optimistic. Oh, I'm going to have to stand up for that. Oh, yeah, that's good. There we go. Last one. That one took a little bit of more, more oomph than I anticipated. Mm -hmm. So you guys got any holidays or anything planned for, for the spring? I'm focusing on spring. I know I'm nowhere near it, but... I know a couple people are going away for February. Okay. All right, let's start gluing down. And do we want to have some notches? I think we do. If I look at these, I think I like the notched ones better, to tell you the truth. But I'll do one and one again. Give me options. So let's take these. And somewhat center. I'm enjoying this process and I absolutely love that I now have some ready to go I think that was I found the whole process of making journals so much more enjoyable I mean the whole process is enjoyable get don't get me wrong but I found it much more enjoyable when I had pre-made ephemera pieces. It was just, the process went just faster and I didn't have to, you know, worry about creating specific things. And it, my journals looked better too, because I wasn't trying to make them, you know, all matchy matchy. Okay. Do that. That looks good. Let's get this guy on. Oops. Let's try to keep the glue on the paper. It tends to work a lot better that way. There we go. I love textured paper. This kind of polka dot stuff has kind of can kind of feel the little bumps on it. My like off camera here. There we go. Oh, see, that's cute, right? I like that. Put you on here. Like that. Look at this. Oh, I feel so good having this done. Now I'm like, what do we want to work on next? What's our next video going to be? More ephemera. Let's get our ephemera built up. Yay, that one done. And this one, we're just going to do it this way. 
And I think the double-sided like Tim Holtz papers would work really well because then you can just, you don't have to pick four papers, you can just literally flip the flip the pieces and use the back side, right, as a contrasting color or pattern or what have you. Looks like I need to refill my glue again and I just did it not that long ago. Must have been a gluing maniac over the last little while. Okay. This one is the L or the number seven, however you want to put that in your mind to do. That. Okay. Great. Sorry, I kind of got lost in my thoughts there for a second. And there. And last one. There we go. So we have four full page pockets ready to go on pages. We can, like I said, you can either pre-make the pages so you can glue them on on a page right away and then just keep that as in your stash with pre-made pages to it or you can just hang on to them like this in your, um, I have like little boxes and ones say pockets and what have you so I just store them in there so if I need a pocket I just go to that little bin and flip through to see what what works but look at these aren't those fantastic and we got four made in 51 minutes 52 minutes so that was fantastically fun well thank you guys so much I hope that you found this video helpful I appreciate every single one of you especially all my new subscribers if you found value in this video please give it a thumbs up if you haven't subscribed please do that ring that notification bell so that you get notification of new videos once they're posted thanks so much for joining me guys have a wonderful day and p.s i love you